Hey guys, thanks for joining me today because I've really been looking forward to this one. Today, I'm gonna go over my tips, tricks, and techniques for creating mini pics. That's my series of minimalist pixel art characters. I've made some on this show before when I pay tribute to Ocarina of Time, Hamilton, and Back to the Future. This is gonna be pretty informal and relaxed, but hopefully give you a nice glimpse into my process. But before we get started, there's just a few things I wanna get out of the way. Number one, my designs are not definitive. They can change over time if I come up with something better, have a change of preferences, or, as we just saw, Perler can release a bunch of new colors. It's always fun to revisit characters to see if they can be improved, so nothing is ever set in stone. Number two, be aware that this isn't technically true minimalist pixel art. I just really like the term mini pics when I was trying to think of a shorthand name for this style. My goal is to shrink down characters, but keep them instantly recognizable, leaving some room for me to play around with the designs. If it were legit, minimalist pixel art, The Simpsons would probably go from this to something like this. So mini pics aren't as minimalist as they could be, but they're as minimalist as I'm willing to go. And finally, number three, remember to always go with what looks best for you. If you disagree with my beat placement or color choice, trust your eye. Never feel obligated to follow my patterns exactly. These are my techniques for creating mini pics. They don't have to be yours. All right, keeping those three things in mind, let's chill out make some mini pics. The first thing I recommend is creating a guide character. One that's the average height and basic body type of the standard mini pics and will act as a point of reference when creating other characters. Hey, it's Waldo. The perfect guy to journey through the lands of pop culture with us. See, when I originally created mini pics, it was because I wanted to make Where's Waldo-esque Perler Beat scenes with lots and lots of characters. No! It's like a Where's Waldo page. Can you find me? Check out all these zany characters. In order to fit them all on the canvases, I decided to try to make them pretty small, but easily identifiable. Thus, the mini pics were born, and Waldo was kind of the original. His template is as follows. He's one row for his feet, nine for his legs, eight for his torso, arms are nine beads each, and one for the neck. Now, the basic mini pics head shape would be four by four, with two beads rounding at the top, and one for the ear. But of course, Waldo has hair, and he's wearing his hat. He also gets two white dots for eyes, because he wears glasses. Notice how I alternated the colors on his sleeves to contrast the stripes on his midsection. I think it adds some distinction, and on a scale this small, it's important to take those opportunities when you can. Now you can use the Waldo template here to create all kinds of characters. Here's Fry from Futurama. Or Smithers from The Simpsons. Notice how their jackets overlap the top of their pants by a row, and their sleeves in there too. That's pretty typical for Minipix jackets. Not always though. Like 2015 Marty McFly. His jacket had that automatic tailor fit feature, so it ends right at his waist. That jacket was so cool, I really wanted one as a kid. For really long coats, like 2015 Doc Brown here, don't forget to fill in that space between his legs for the back of the coat. I usually go with a darker version of the coat's color, since it's in shadow. Although sometimes the inside of longer coats can have a colored lining, like Heath Ledger's Joker in The Dark Knight. The same goes for capes, too. I've always loved these 60s Batman costumes. So colorful and distinct, you don't have to do much to make sure they're recognizable. But I do try to stay somewhat accurate. Like, Minipix belts are usually just the row above their pants. Robbins is a little different here because he's got this tunic thing going on. Hold on, let me make a normal guy with a belt. Hey, it's Hank from King of the Hill. He's got some pretty standard attire on here. White t-shirt, blue jeans, normal belt. These blues on the belt are for his belt loops. Anyway, Batman's belt was always pretty enormous, which is understandable. It's not just a belt, it's a utility belt, so he keeps a lot of stuff in there. So he's one of the few mini picks to get a double row belt. Now would be a good time to talk about character height, because one thing I always try to do with mini picks is keep the scale consistent. So let's backtrack a little. We have Waldo of average height. I made Fry and Smithers the same height too, but made Marty one shorter, because he's younger at 17, plus Michael J. Fox is just 5'5". So his torso is only 7 beads. When making a character slightly shorter than average, always try to remove a row from the torso area. Mini Pig's legs are short enough as it is, and when making a character slightly taller, like Doc here, try adding a row to the legs, otherwise he'll start to look top heavy. The Joker takes us back to average height, but let's talk about how much more detail he has going on in his face. I do enjoy giving Minipix some character in the eyes if it's appropriate, and his dark makeup certainly calls for that to be acknowledged. 
And like I said before, I usually give them the white dots if they wear glasses. If there were sunglasses, they would be black or dark gray. Or in the case of Hank's friend Dale here, regular gray. With 2015 Doc, I made his futuristic glasses more of a visor, because like in the movie, they really just wrap around his face. Also note that he's got his sleeves rolled up, with a watch on each wrist. I added some cheddar at the end of the yellow sleeves for that distinction we mentioned earlier. Otherwise, I think it would have looked like he was wearing a short-sleeved coat or something. I also leave Adam West's Batman's eyes exposed, because you could always see his eyes clearly through the mask. I wish I could have included those funny painted-on eyebrows too, but sadly that detail is just a little too small for mini pics. He's also slightly taller than average, so I added a row to his legs. And Robin is slightly shorter, so I removed a row from his torso. Just like Doc and Marty. Also, note how Robin's shoes had this winged style to them, so I put a couple beads on each side of his ankles to honor that. Waldo makes a pretty good template, but you're always going to have some adjustments to make, especially when it comes to superhero costumes. Now if I want to make someone really tall, like say, Darth Vader, I'll add a row to his legs and torso, and even the top of his head for his helmet. Then he really towers over our Luke Skywalker, just like in the movie. As you can tell, I count on Google a lot to reference images and information that help me make the mini pigs as accurate as I can. It can be confusing though. Like did you know that Han Solo is 5'11"? But wait, Harrison Ford is 6'1". So how does that work exactly? Who knows? And yes, I'm aware that characters can often be different heights than the actors playing them, like how Elijah Wood is 5'6", but Frodo is two feet shorter and he's playing a hobbit. Harrison's height difference just seems much more inconsequential. But whatever, this is why I said to trust your eye, do what looks best to you. You can find contradictory color info as well. Like Smithers here has a lot of variation. And I'm not talking about that one time he was black. I mean his hair. Sometimes it's gray, sometimes it's more tan, one time it looks blue. Even his Simpsons Wikipedia page describes it as light brown gray. Eventually, you're just gonna have to choose. Anyway, these characters have been great for some height and fashion tips, but let's start including some women and children with the Belcher family from Bob's Burgers. There's a lot of good things we can discuss here. First off, Linda is slightly shorter than Bob, so her torso is only seven beads high, and of course the kids get progressively smaller. Tina and Jean have the same size torso at five beads tall, but Tina has longer legs. By the time we get to someone Louise's size, her torso is only three beads wide. She's rounded out nicely with her arms though, and her dress expands at the bottom. Notice how Hank's and Dale's arms are two beads thick, while Bob's arm is only one. This is because their arm positions are holding their beverages, so the widest part is facing us, while Bob's arm is presenting his burger, so it's turned up flat. Yeah, that's a burger. But perhaps the most noticeable Belcher trait is that Bob, Linda, and Louise have this slightly elongated neck. That's the way the original character designs look, so this would be a good time to talk about recognizing animation styles. You see, live action characters are usually pretty straightforward, whether you're making a Ghostbuster, or Han Solo, or Dr. Alan Grant, you're going to follow similar steps with some slight variations on the basic template we made with Waldo, right? Things are different when we get to cartoon characters. Not to say none of them follow those steps, many do. Cartoons like King of the Hill and, and Archer were drawn pretty realistically. But things change when we get into the animated shows like Adventure Time, Looney Tunes, and South Park. Let's take a look at my favorite South Park character, Randy Marsh. If we were to create him in the same mini pick style we've been making so far, you know, where he's kind of turned in one direction, one foot facing us, one turn in the same direction his faces, he would look like this. Okay, but I don't think it's a great representation. See on South Park, even when the characters are looking around, their bodies with those big round heads are always facing forward, and most of them don't have any space between their legs. That's just the style of the show. So South Park mini pics are unique in that they are facing forward and their legs are just a solid block, sometimes with that black line down the middle. Randy's arms are a bit shorter too, just seven beads since they end just past his waist. And the kids are even more stylized, with Stan's legs being much shorter compared to the rest of his body. They're just a single row of beads. Of course, a character like Cartman will be another column thicker because he's so, uh... I'm big bound. Right. Compare that to how a Simpsons kid looks. Like Bart. Separate legs, head is more square. And looking at that time a Bart character was on South Park, I think the scale is pretty accurate too. Cartman is far from the only thick character. Homer is one of those characters whose legs are three beads wide, making his torso seven beads wide instead of the usual five. On the other end of the spectrum, Adventure Time characters often have very skinny arms and legs, so they're usually only one bead wide. Same with Roberto's robot limbs, or the kids on home movies. Remember, 
Mini picks are not just about representing the character, but also the style that character inhabits. And I should point out, having legs that are three beads or wider doesn't necessarily mean the character is fat. Sometimes they're just bigger in general. Like Chewbacca, or Beast from the X-Men cartoon. Anyway, as much as we want to keep the scale consistent, sometimes it's just not possible. Like if I wanted to make the characters from Toy Story, to keep them to scale with everyone, like actually toy size, they'd be like three beads tall tops. That doesn't give me the detail I want. So I just bite the bullet and make them a decent size. And sure, I could probably make them small and more detailed if I used mini beads, but whatever, I'm using regular beads here. It's good to have the option, but I'm sticking with regular size beads for now. But you do you, of course. Another thing I want to go over is the importance of giving your characters props. It's not necessary, but sometimes will escalate your work to the next level and may help make your subjects be more recognizable. Remember our Vader and Luke? Let's give them some lightsabers. Marty, have a hoverboard. And Winston. In fact, let's get all the Ghostbusters out here. See, these guys are practically identical from the neck down, and that's not a bad thing, they are in uniforms after all. But adding props can help differentiate the characters. So what can we do? Well, we can give Ray his goggles, and Egon his PKE meter. Vecman doesn't really use gadgets except for his proton pack here. And we can have Winston holding up a trap. Nice. Finally, remember, if you're creating a new character and get stuck on a design, you can always go back and look at what you've done before. A lot of past characters can hold the key to cracking the design of a new one. For example, if we wanted to make Krusty the Clown, well, we know that Krusty and Homer are practically identical, so use Homer as a template. Most South Park characters are pretty much the same too, just change up some of the colors and hairstyles. Making Christopher Reeve as Superman? Use your Adam West Batman as a guide. And in my opinion, if you made Han Solo, then you know how tall to make Indiana Jones and Rick Deckard. Want to make Freddy Krueger? Switch out the colors on Waldo's sweater, tweak Indiana Jones' hat, and you're going to end up recycling some designs. Egon and Hank Hill have the exact same head. But yeah, they would, right? I mean, look at them. I have a lot more to talk about in regards to mini picks, fashion choices, facial hair, arm positions, but I feel like this video is running a little long as it is. It was fun just to hang out and talk some basic techniques with you, though. I really didn't plan much of this in advance, I just made things as I thought of them. We'll go over some more complex designs next time. If you have any characters you'd like to see me tackle in the next installment of Making Mini Picks, feel free to let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, my friends. Stay tuned, because episode 100 is almost here.